If you're looking for one place that has all the fluid intervals that you'll encounter on your BMW, you're in the right spot. Because in today's video, we're gonna go over every single fluid interval you'll encounter and need to do on your BMW in order to keep it running long term. Let's get into the video. What's up everybody, my name is Fritz and welcome to the channel. The order that we're gonna go in today's video are going to be the easier fluids to service as well as the ones that you'll encounter more often. The first one that we have up is gas. Told you, simple. But what you may not have realized is that there's a sticker here indicating what is the minimum fuel requirement on your BMW. And this could vary depending on what region that you're in. But generally speaking, whatever this sticker says, that's what you're gonna wanna follow. And if you don't have the sticker here, or maybe it's too faded to see, just look to your owner's manual and follow the fuel recommendations from there. Another cool thing is that if you look on your instrument cluster, the little fuel symbol there with the arrow pointing, that arrow is actually gonna point to what side of the car your fuel tank is on. So if you're new to BMWs, just make sure to take a look because it might be on the opposite side from what you're used to. Next up, we have another fairly simple fluid, and that is your washer fluid. This one, you're just gonna to wanna to fill up when you don't have any more fluid coming in through the lines, but this may also be indicative that the motor that pumps the fluid is out or that there's a clog in the line. And when your washer fluid does get low enough, you will get a message on your instrument cluster. At this time, you can top it off with at max three liters, but just be careful here once you start to get to that capacity because when it backs up, it backs up real fast and could be a mess. So maybe if you're really low, start with two and then go really gradual for the last increments. Another cool thing, if you're new to BMWs and you want that headlight washer fluid, then you're gonna wanna look just below the headlights. And if you see that little square cutout, then that means that you have that feature installed. And all that you have to do is with the lights on, hold down that stock just a little bit longer, and then you'll get that headlight spray. And the next fluid interval that we have up is where most BMW DIYers and car DIYers in general are born, and that is the motor oil. In which case you wanna change out the oil as well as the filter every 10,000 miles, depending on what conditions you're driving it in and how hard you're actually driving it. And you do wanna be using an oil that meets or exceeds the BMW specifications for your car. In the case of the N55 as well as the N26 that my dad has, that's gonna be BMW LL01 standards. And in order to check this, you just wanna take a peek over at your owner's manual, which will also indicate what weight of oil you should be using. But if you need a quick reference into what weight you should be using, sometimes the underside of the hood has a sticker indicating that weight. Because cars like the N55 will use something like a 540, and then the N20, N26 will be using something like a 020. For extra peace of mind, you can upgrade the oil filter housing to a metal one on your next oil change, and you can keep tabs of what's going on internally with your engine with a magnetic drain plug. And in the N55, we need 6.9 quarts in order to fill it up with an oil change. In the N20, N26, that's gonna be five quarts of oil. So you're also gonna to wanna to take a look at the capacity in the owner's manual for your specific car. And we will touch on a little bit on if you should deviate from the BMW standard fluids towards the end. And in between our washer fluid cap, as well as our oil fill cap, we have our coolant expansion tank, in which case we wanna flush the coolant every 70,000 miles. We do wanna be using that BMW blue coolant, which comes in about a gallon sized jug that we do need to dilute to 50-50 mix. Having two gallons of 50-50 mix is good enough to service about two cars, depending on how much coolant you're exactly pulling but it is definitely more than enough for one car. While you're there, especially on the first time you're servicing the cooling system on your BMW, I would say switch out a few things that are made out of plastic, like the bleeder screw, the coolant Mickey Mouse flange that is made out of plastic and prone to breaking. You're gonna wanna change that one out for an all metal one. And because it's connected to that hose, which you're gonna take off anyways, you might as well upgrade the hose. And the cool thing about most modern day BMWs is that they have the purge system integrated into the cars. So you don't need any specialty tools. You just need to run that system once the coolant has been topped off in the reservoir. And then if it drops below that minimum level, just go ahead, top off again, purge it again, and then it should fall right in that middle section between the min and max. 
moving on over to the opposite side of the engine bay to address the last two fluids that we have in this area. The first one being one that you might not need to service right now because BMWs, especially the F chassis, are only starting to get in their 10th year of age. So maybe you don't have this problem just yet, but eventually the AC system will need to be recharged. And rather than spending a bunch of money trying to replace AC components, I would recommend going with a recharge kit at first to save a little bit of money for which one can should be more than enough. And all that you have to do is plug it into the low service port, which on BMWs is usually located in the back. And any adapter for those AC recharge kits should only be able to work with the low pressure side, not the high pressure. So it's virtually impossible to mess this up. If one can doesn't seem to be enough, then you might have a leak and you might want to investigate other AC components after that. Hopefully for most of you, just that recharge kit is good enough. And the last fluid to service in the area is of course your brake fluid right underneath this panel that you will want to change out every 20,000 miles or two years because eventually moisture does seep into the system and this is more important for those of you who drive in wet or rainy conditions or when the rain season comes the combination of moisture inside the line as well as moisture on the outside of the wheel when you're going at higher speeds, say 60 miles and above, will cause that brake drying system to overreact, apply the brakes, and you'll instantly lose power. And if that does happen, then it's definitely time to flush the brake fluid. Of course, you could do this with your next brake change, but I would say treat that more of a service interval where you could take a moisture meter and check on the fluid inside the reservoir to determine whether or not you need to flush the system. Because when you reset the pistons inside of the calipers, you want to keep an eye on the reservoir to make sure that it doesn't overflow and get brake fluid all over the place. In the case of a daily driven car, you don't necessarily need the best brake fluid like Motul 660 and above. 600 is perfectly fine because if you're not tracking your car, you're not going to really see the benefits of going to a more premium brake fluid. That 600 or even the standard BMW brake fluid is going to be good enough here. Now the last two fluids that we have up are going to be a little bit controversial. So feel free to let it fly in the comment section. But generally speaking, BMW will say that their transmission and differential fluid is lifelong fluid, so it never needs to be replaced. But you'll have some people on the other end of the spectrum and tend to go more towards a traditional route of that service interval in 50,000 mile marks. Because of that, I called a couple of shops in my area and took an average of what they would recommend. Starting off with the transmission, they said 70,000 miles is generally the way to go. So if you have one of those with the plastic pan at the bottom, you will want to replace the pan along with the fluid. That way you get in a fresh gasket and the filter is embedded in that pan. So you'll get a fresh filter as well. If you have the metal one, you'll just want to drain the old fluid and top it off. The thing that you want to make sure to do with the transmission is that you loosen the fill cap first. That way you're 100% sure that you can top it off and then loosen the drain plug. That way, in case you can't get off that fill plug, you could take it to a shop and they can service it there. But if you drain all of the fluid without making sure that you can put back in through the fill cap, then you're gonna have to tow it. So loosen that fill cap first. And the last fluid that we have up today comes in the rear of the car, which of course is the differential fluid. This one from the survey I found, people were recommending service intervals of about 100,000 miles. The differentials will take about a liter and a half of fluid depending on how much you're able to extract because the one in the rear, the fill and drain plug is actually the same. So it will really depend on how much you're able to extract from the differential. This, as well as the transmission, is where people with OCD will go crazy because it's full when it starts to come out of the fill plug. So no real scientific way of knowing when, no sensors, no indicators. You just fill it up until fluid starts to come out. So if you're able to extract a lot, that's about as how much you should be able to put back in. If you have an all wheel drive variant, you will need to service the differential in the front, but that one, fortunately, you have a drain and a fill plug. Just make sure to go back and do that method where you loosen the fill plug first and then the drain plug as we did with the transmission. All right, and as far as fluids are concerned, I pretty much recommended BMW spec fluid throughout this video. And that's because I'm running under the assumption that you're using your car as a daily and that you probably are still using a lot of stock components. 
But if you do go aftermarket, say with a differential, a clutch, if you tune your car, the manufacturers of those parts or of that tune should also come with a recommendation for what kind of fluids you should be using with their system. And in that case, you're gonna to wanna to use that exclusively. The big brands, the name tuners, they have a bunch of experience in the game and they know exactly what they're talking about. So when they make a recommendation, you should be good to go. And there it is. All the fluid intervals that you'll need to keep up with in order to make sure that your BMW continues to run strong and serves you for many more years to come. But if you wanna check out what are the common N55 problems so that you're never stranded on the side of the road, make sure to check the link in the top corner. If you feel that I missed out on something, let me know in the comments. All of today's resources will be linked in the description. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. And I'll see you in the next one.